when we can focus right now, when we're in an experience like this, we don't, we don't really think about our pain. We don't think about our colds or our back aches or our knee pains. Or we're in this moment and we're released from that. And then we've got plenty of time to pick it back up later. But right now, right now is where we need to experience this oneness. Anyway, it goes on to say, a miracle is lighted up all dark and ancient caverns where the rites of death have echoed since time began. For time has lost its hold upon the world. The Son of God has come in glory to redeem the lost, to save the helpless, and to give the world the gift of his forgiveness. Who could see the world as dark and sinful when God's Son has come at last to set it free? And it's just a switch in our perception. So many times, you know, we look at the things that are going on in the world and we just go, oh, how awful, how awful all these things are. And what this is saying is, this is the way to look at it because the Son of God has come in glory. We've come in glory to redeem these lost thoughts in our minds and in the minds of others, to help people who do not seem to be able to help themselves and to give the world the gift of our forgiveness. Think about that, that that's what we are here to do. And there's all you have to do is look around the world. There's plenty of places to offer forgiveness, isn't there? There's plenty of places to offer the extension of your love. And it says, who could see the world if this is how we looked at the world? Who could see the world as dark and sinful? when what we know the world is, is an opportunity for us to come and give this gift, this awareness, this truth, this peace, this love. You who perceive it yourself as weak and frail, with futile hopes and devastated dreams, born but to die, to weep and suffer pain, hear this, all power is given unto you in earth and heaven. There is nothing you cannot do. See, and I think that's pretty darn powerful. What this is saying is you, and I know, how many times have you said that? I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help. It's saying you have the power once you know who you are because the Christ walks with you. And it says, but you play, it says, you play the game of death, of being helpless, of being pitifully tied to dissolution in a world which shows no mercy to you. It says, yet when you accord it mercy, its mercy shines on you. We think we're weak. We're not weak. We think we have nothing to give. We have everything to give. We think that we cannot offer the world anything, and yet we are the Holy Son of God himself. We have a lot to offer to this world, and we need to step back and engender this truth and then let it shine through us. That's what we're asked to do. And then it says it, it, says it right there. So then let the Son of God awaken. We've got to awaken from this sleep that we've fallen into, that we are incapable and opening our holy eyes, return to bless the world we made. In error, it began, but it will end in the reflection of our holiness, the awareness of our identity. And we will sleep no more and simply dream of death, of the end that finally comes. Then join with me today. Your glory is the light that saves the world. The awareness of who you are is the light that saves the world. Do not withhold salvation longer look about the world and see the suffering there is not your heart willing to bring your weary brothers rest would we not want to offer peace of course we would if we saw suffering so what do we do we find the truth within ourselves we become what god would have us be know who we are so that he can use us you know when helen first started taking down a course in miracles she had no idea why she would do this. What she heard in one of her own personal messages was, the world is worsening to a place where teachers of God are needed now more than ever before. You know, the Course in Miracles came as an answer to that challenge that was happening in the world. Don't you think, then, we should follow it? You know, if it is, if it is here to help release us from the suffering of the world, then why are we not accepting this truth and being what Jesus is telling us we can be, which is his instrument in this world to relieve the suffering and to relieve the pain. And how do we do it? Just by accepting our identity. I'm not telling you you've got to go out there and do anything, but by accepting your identity, you'll know what to do. By knowing that you have the power in heaven and earth to save 
heaven and earth by your awareness in your mind, you're going to make a, a powerful difference. You're going to be used. So it says, do not withhold salvation longer. Look about the world. See the suffering. Is not your heart willing to bring your weary brothers rest? It says, they await your own release. So the world stays in chains until you wake up. They cannot see the mercy of the world until you find it within yourself. They suffer until you have denied your ho its hold upon you. They die till you accept your own eternal life. You are the Holy Son of God himself. Remember this, and all the world is free. Remember this, and heaven and earth become one. What a powerful, what a beautiful and powerful statement. That's how powerful our identity is. That's how powerful it is for us to know who and what we are.